Hello, welcome to this video on the history and evolution of DevOps. We will be exploring what DevOps really is and how it has grown over the years. Before DevOps became popular, IT departments in organizations usually involved a clear separation of work between the two crucial teams, development and operations. You may be wondering what exactly do the operations and development teams do? The operations team concentrates on delivering and managing the systems that software code runs on, such as Windows or Linux servers, network infrastructure, database servers, etc. On the other hand, the development teams focus on reading and testing the software code. The operations team is mostly made up of system administrators and site reliability engineers. While the development team is mostly made up of software developers and quality assurance testers. The workflow amongst both teams is usually in the form of silos, where the developers focus on developing new features and fixing bugs. Thereafter, they hand over the code to operations for release to the production environment. Usually, releasing the code to production by the operations guys is mostly manual, time-consuming and error-prone. Sometimes, the new features introduced by developers don't play well with the servers they are released to, and different problems arise that cause a lot of friction between both development and operations. Imagine a server administrator getting alerts at 2 a.m. in the morning to fix errors that he believes were caused by some new feature introduced by the developers. On the other hand, developers are pushing back on the blame because they also believe the latest patch to the servers has led to the annoying errors that are making website visitors complain. Because the development and operations teams often work separately in silos. Finding the root cause of problems and fixing them smoothly usually becomes much harder. And at the end of the day, releasing software takes much longer and not only that, it is usually released with a lot of bugs, which means a bad customer experience for the end users of the software. Therefore, DevOps to the rescue. So, how did DevOps solve this problem, you may wonder. Well, the term DevOps was coined to solve the problems created by this silos approach to releasing software. DevOps is simply development and operations together. DevOps is a culture, set of practices, and set of principles that aims to close the gap between organizations' development and operations teams, so that software can be delivered to end users faster, more reliably, and with quick feedback. Think about putting on a play with your friends. You have to write the script, and your friends have to build the set and make the costumes. DevOps is like having a director who is also part of the entire process, helping you all work together to make the best play. With DevOps, everyone works together from the beginning to make sure the script is exciting, the set and costumes are beautiful, and the play runs smoothly. And if there are any problems during the play, like a broken prop or a forgotten line, the director helps fix them quickly so you can all keep putting on a great show. In the same way, DevOps helps an organization experience smooth coordination between the development and operations teams to make a quality product, which is synonymous with the play. But who came up with the idea of DevOps? Who used it for the first time? How has it changed and been accepted over time? I'm sure you're eager to know this too. Until the year 2007, developing and releasing software was very challenging. Patrick Debois, a software engineer and consultant, came up with the term DevOps, which was unique at the time. Debois found that there was a big gap between the development and operations team and a lot of miscommunication between them, which sometimes led to problems. He knew that delivering software needed to be done in a more effective and collaborative way. He started putting together conferences and meetups where developers, operations engineers, and other professionals from different industries could talk about problems they were having in their development cycle and share the best ways to solve them. Always keep in mind that when DevOps was first being used, automation and working together were the most important things. Developers and operations engineers were advised to work together to automate tasks like testing, deploying, and monitoring. This improved things and resulted in fewer mistakes. People got together and agreed that this method or approach was a good way to get software to customers faster and more reliably. 
Worthy of mention is Andrew Clay Schaefer, a well-known and popular developer who calls himself the Human Swiss Army Knight. He was one of the first people to talk about DevOps tools and practices before DevOps was even a word. He had worked with Patrick Debois to form the Agile Systems Administration Group, a group of system administrators talking about Agile values, principles, and best practices. He worked hard to get people to use DevOps by hosting many DevOps Days events and was known for helping people deliver systems with better tools and methods. You haven't learned anything until you change your behavior, he will always say. Over time, DevOps has grown to include more principles and methods, which could mean different things to different organizations, and that's why it has become a buzzword and a trend in the ecosystem that will not be over anytime soon. I hope you are excited about this. DevOps is now seen as a change in culture that emphasizes working together, automating tasks, reworking processes, adding security, and managing feedback. It's about breaking down the walls between the development and operations teams and creating a culture of shared ownership and constant improvement. The need for excellent DevOps engineers continues to rise as more principles and tools are introduced into the ecosystem. While this is good news, it does have some drawbacks, such as the need to learn a variety of tools. By many principles, DevOps has indeed changed a lot, so much so that observability, such as monitoring and logging is now a big part of it. Teams can track and measure how their software and infrastructure are doing. This makes it easy to find problems and fix them quickly. And then it also makes software more reliable and available, which is very important for giving customers the satisfaction they want. DevOps has changed the way organizations work and it is being used quickly all over the world. DevOps is used by all types of organizations, including startups, small businesses, and medium and large corporations. DevOps is being used more and more in organizations and businesses are moving in that direction. Always remember that if a company cannot satisfy customer needs quickly, they will lose to their competitors who can. For this reason, a lot of successful companies today have turned to embracing DevOps due to the value it brings to both the customers and the organization at large. Some of the companies that have adopted DevOps are Meta, Netflix, Amazon, HP, Walmart, Adobe, and many more, including the UK and US government departments. Let's take a look at a few examples of how organizations have used DevOps to turn things around. In 2006, HP had more than 400 developers on the LazarJet firmware team. However, a report showed that only 5% of their time was spent on releasing new features. A huge part of the developers' time was spent on meetings and planning. This made it impossible to find bugs until at least six weeks after the code was written. The HP team decided to move to the use of DevOps practices such as continuous integration, continuous delivery pipelines, and test automation, which resulted in about 100 to 150 code commits per day, and 75,000 to 1 million lines of code change in a single day in production. You then already imagine how quickly they were getting feedback from customers with this approach. It will also interest you to know that Amazon moved from physical servers to the Amazon Web Service Cloud in 2010. This enabled the delivery of applications and services at a higher rate. The end result was that by May 2011, Amazon was deploying new software to production servers an average of every 11.6 seconds. During its busiest times, 1,079 new deployments were sent into the production environment in one hour. Statistics from places like Grandview Research, Statistop, etc. on DevOps show that organizations benefit by 63% when they adopt DevOps. Also, these studies show that the size of the DevOps market is likely to grow massively. In the wake of this new trend, many organizations and teams have started using the ops concept to adopt similar DevOps principles in other areas of IT. For example, SysOps, DataOps, DevSecOps, AIOps, ITOps, DevSecOps, MLOps, etc. As more and more organizations are adopting DevOps, and believing in the value it brings, so is the demand for professionals like you who will help them implement the ideas and technologies that surround it. In this video, we learned about DevOps and how it has evolved. 
In the next video, we will discuss the principles of DevOps and their impact on the software development lifecycle. I hope that you got a lot out of this video and have a good background relating to your journey into the DevOps profession. Let's keep moving. I'll see you in the next video.